Brother Lads, welcome back to the Kosi Asna podcast. My name is Kosi. Welcome back to a brand new video. This is the latest Asna news and transfer news as well. Arsenal have agreed personal terms with Mikel Moreno. It's a breaking story. And now we can confirm that the deal is getting closer and closer and closer. Jakub Kivio has told Arsenal that he wants to assess all his options. ESR has completed his medicals. And a few players have told Arsenal as well that next week is going to be very crucial for them as they want to talk to a couple of different clubs and assess their options ahead of the new Premier League season. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Mikel Moreno is getting closer and closer to Arsenal Football Club. Now, this is a breaking story from the Football Zone who have just confirmed that Arsenal have reached an agreement on personal terms with Mikel Moreno. The Spaniard will sign a four-year deal with Arsenal if the two clubs can agree on a fee. Arsenal see this as a market opportunity for one of Mikel Arteta's long-term targets but not want to pay a massive fee for the player. So a big story there from the Sports Zone confirming Arsenal have agreed personal terms with the player Mika Moreno. Uh, Fabrizio today has, has, has been saying um, something about Mika Moreno and he said Atletico Madrid and Barcelona are still thinking of Mika Moreno but both clubs feel that Mika Moreno is giving total priority to Arsenal. Moreno is in the list of targets for Arsenal and is very high on the list. At the moment there has been no direct contact with Real Sociedad, that's according to uh, Fabrizio and he said no concrete negotiations are taking place. However, according to um, Nicolo Shira, he says there have been concrete negotiations uh, between the two clubs. Now, he says um, it could happen very soon. Two clubs, the two clubs could actually, uh, you know, talk. Arsenal having a very, very positive exchange on the player's sign. The player is tempted by the Premier League, tempted by Arsenal, and very, very tempted by Mikel Arteta, who is considered the perfect coach for him by people close to the player. There is a lot to dive into on this deal, guys. There's a lot to dive into on this deal. First and foremost, I want to confirm that uh, it is true. Arsenal and Mikel Moreno have been in talks for quite some time now. Fabrizio has been reporting about it. The Athletic have reported about it. That um, Mikel and, and Edu have tried to do what, whatever they can um, and, 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 and they've been really, really on this one to try and get the player on board, to try and agree personal terms on board. I also understand that it was about a week ago when Arsenal sent in their proposal for personal terms uh, to the player. It's around the same time that Barcelona did. It's around the same time that Atletico Madrid did. Actually, um, Atletico Madrid sent their proposal to the player and they also sent a proposal to Real Sociedad. Of course, Real Sociedad have not yet decided because they thought the player could actually stay. Now, personal terms are very, very good. And I would say um, it's a very good strategy for you to sign a player like Mika Moreno. Why? Because first and foremost, you're thinking... If you agree personal terms with the player, then that actually um, you know, forces the parent club to sell. And then it also forces them to lower their expectations in terms of uh, you know, the price. I mean, if, if, if the player is not yet you know, agreeing to join you, probably you know, they, they could say, we want to keep him. And therefore, we're going to put the price uh, as high as possible. But the moment the player says, this is the project I want to join, I want to be a part of Arsenal. I have already agreed on a, a new deal. Then 100% Real Sociedad are going to you know, release all the hope they had in terms of keeping the player. So personal terms really are important for us in these deals. Calafiori, Arsenal agreed personal terms initially uh, with the player. And that made Bologna um, you know, really you know, they, were, they were put in a very tight position, in a very tight situation. They, w they would have kept the player if personal terms were not in place, right? Because they had the option to either keep him, they had the option to, uh, you know, send him out uh, to another club. But the moment he agreed personal terms with Arsenal, all the other clubs disappeared and Bologna had to agree a price with Arsenal. It's the same situation that Arsenal put in uh, Real Sociedad. It's a very, very good uh, scenario. What Arsenal understood is Mikel Moreno was always going to want to play in the Premier League. And for us to benefit from that, what we did, we offered him an, uh, you know, you know, a contract that allows him to go back to the Premier League, but then we gave him an offer that allows him to join a project that's going to be a winning project. And I, I remember talking, uh, I, I think it was like two days ago, and I said, I don't remember, uh, sorry, I don't see 
Atletico Madrid and Barcelona's projects beating Arsenal projects. If he wants to join ATM or Barca, it's one of two reasons. He's Spanish, and therefore he wants to play for Barcelona. Every Spaniard, uh, every Spaniard really does. Or he wants to stay in Spain, and he doesn't want to fly overseas. Well, according to Fabrizio, the player doesn't have a problem with flying overseas. The player doesn't have a problem uh, with uh, you know signing for a club in the Premier League. And the two clubs that have been trying to pose a big threat for Arsenal are actually disappearing. Etienne feel mm, he's giving more priority to Arsenal than to us. At uh, Barcelona, a feeling he's giving more priority to them than to us. And I think we, really with Barcelona, we're going to come back to the personal terms. Um, really with Barcelona. Are they, were they seriously trying to sign Mikel Marino after trying to sign Danny Olmo? Olmo is a priority for them. And they have Frankie de Jong and they're Pedri and they have Gavi. It's a joke. Like, they were never going to convince him um, in terms of game time. Like, how are they really going to use him? Uh, with Atletico Madrid, I really felt like they had a chance, but not against Arsenal. I think they would have signed him if Arsenal were not involved in this deal. But back to the personal terms. A contract until 2028, that is a game changer. Because, listen, he's 28 years of age. Um, by 2028, four years later, he's going to be 29, 30, 30. He's going to be 31. I think that's okay. It could be four years plus an additional year. That takes the contract to 2029, uh, right? And then I can see him as one of those players that play for Arsenal. He continues to extend by one year and another year. And he could leave Arsenal maybe in 2031 or even in 2032. So I can see him as a player who is going to be here, not for a very long time, but maybe for six years or even seven years. In terms of the salary, I don't think Arsenal will find uh, big problems with Mikel Marino's salary. At the moment, he's not earning... The 200k Nico Williams is earning at Bilbao. He's not earning that 300k um, that you know players at 28 are earning. So he's earning the usual wage. All Arsenal can do right now is maybe double his wage, give him 150k a week, or giving give him something like 130 or 100 and uh, you know 40k a week, and everything is going to be in place. So personal terms for me, they were never in doubt. We were always going to have an agreement on personal terms. It's now between us and. Um, it's now us, between us and Re Real Sociedad. Can we agree a price for him? Can we agree on a fee for him? Because like you've seen, Arsenal don't want to pay massive wages. So, uh, they don't want to pay a massive fee as well. So we are looking to pay 25 million euros to 35 million euros, probably around there. And that's a little bit fair for a 28-year-old player whose uh, contract's running down in 2025. I think that's fair. 25 to 35 million euros, um, you know, that will be fair, in my opinion. So can we agree on a fee? Yes, we can. There are three things that are going to stand in our way. One, the player has to reject the um, Real Sociedad, and they need to understand it. He needs to tell them, this is my choice. I have made it 100%. Please take your proposal and take your contract offer off my table. If that happens, the second thing... He's got to uh, reject Barcelona and Atletico Madrid outrightly. And by doing that, it will force Real Sociedad to negotiate and understand that Arsenal are the only club to talk with. Arsenal are the only club to negotiate with. Like, like, just like uh, Calafiori did it. Calafiori told Leverkusen, PSG, Chelsea, Real Madrid, please do not waste my time. So if Mikel Marino can tell all these clubs, don't waste my time, that that will tell Real Sociedad, however much we want to create a bidding war, we are never going to, uh, you know, we are never going to pay, or we are never going to get what Arsenal don't want to pay. And the third is set an ultimatum. I think Arsenal need now understand that the season is very near. It's 18 days, 18 good days to the start of the Premier League, and we are on a Premier League countdown right now. So if if you have 18 days. Mikel Marino is going to be a key part of the team. You need to sign him before you get to the fifth day or the tenth day um, of August, right? So we need to set an ultimatum and we need to quickly speed up the deal. I think it's going to happen, guys. I think it's going to be our second signing of the summer with personal terms in, in, in place. We can now go and talk to Real Sociedad and see are we really going to agree on 
a price. Now, this deal is progressing only because Arsenal have also, uh, Fulham actually, have also progressed on um, the Emil Smith Red deal. Uh, he has done his medicals and he has completed them successfully. So Emil Smith Rowe is out. Mikel Marino is coming in. It's not a bad swap. It's just, it's, it's, it's just about um, the age difference, but it's not a bad swap at all. Now, I want us to talk about a few players that I've told Arsenal. They, uh, they want to consider their options as soon as Arsenal land in London next week. Now, Arsenal will come back in London on Thursday this week, but most of the players we are going to talk about have told the club, we want to assess our options next week and we want to leave Arsenal as quickly as possible. Number one is Jakub Kibio. Jakub Kibio, of course, you remember, is one of the players that have been linked with the move away from Arsenal, but um, he was linked with Bologna. Bologna wanted him to get involved in the Ricardo Calafuri deal. Kivio said, no, I don't want to be part of it. Agree your deal for Jakub, uh, you agreed your deal for Ricardo Calafiori, and I'm going to set my future the, the way I want it. I don't want to be, uh, you know, in a deal that takes some player the other way and takes me the other way as well. So Jakub Kivio has told Arsenal that he's going to assess all his options this week after Arsenal land back from the USA. Napoli, Inter, AC Milan, Juventus are all lining up trying to sign Jakub Kivio. Now, for me, first and foremost, I'm happy that Arsenal didn't include this guy into the Ricardo Calafiori deal. Imagine, Arsenal signed Ricardo Calafiori for, let's say, £39 million, pounds, right? That was the fee, £39 million. Pounds. I personally value Jakub Kivio at £30 million. Pounds. Th that's what I value him. I don't know what Arsenal value him at, but I would say £30 million. Pounds. Okay, 25 to £30 million. Pounds. And if a club is going to give us a loan option with an obligation, that's even th that's good, right? Because we can force them into paying bigger money because they're not going to be paying that money right away or they're not going to be paying that money up front. So, Jakub Kivio, where should he go? Inter Milan. Inter Milan are the club that have the money. They're the club that are willing to back their manager. They're the, w they're the club that are really proper in terms of you sit down, you negotiate with a proper you know, club in, in Italy, it's Inter Milan. The other club I would consider at the moment would be Napoli. If they could sell Victor Osimhen, they might have the money, right? And maybe Juve. Juve also have, um, you know, Thiago Mota as manager now. So they might, want to, they might want to back him as a new manager. So wherever he goes, what I care about is the money. Do I think he will go? Yeah, I think he's going to go. Do I think he should go? There are questions to be answered there. There are conversations to be had. But I would still say Jakub Kivio, with Ricardo Calafiori coming in and Zichenko looking like he's going nowhere, yeah, we can move on Jakub Kivio. Yeah, we can move on Jakub Kivio. And next summer, um, if um, maybe Tomiyasu is still as injury prone, we can move him on and bring in another player in his position. So Kivio looks like he's going to leave Arsenal. Rhys Nelson is the other player that has told Arsenal, as soon as we come back, I am going to be... Um, I'm going to be assessing my options. I'm going to decide on a club that I want to join. Now, Leicester City have been the front runners to sign him. Talks have been go ongoing between Arsenal and uh, the player uh, and Leicester. It looks like the player is unconvinced about Leicester City. But we are going to know on Thursday, the moment Arsenal come back, this transfer as well is going to pick up. I would say with Rhys Nelson, if it's Leicester that give us the money, we should force him, not force him maybe, but we should convince him to join Leicester. I think Leicester is a good project, isn't it? Like, Stephen Cooper, I don't trust him. I don't trust the guy, trust me. Like, when I look at him, he looks relegation. He looks like a guy that feels joy when he takes a club down. But um, regardless of what happens, Rhys Nelson has told Arsenal he's going to assess his options next week and let's see what's going to come out of that. Arsenal want 15 million. I think um, Leicester can pay that. And if we can get an obligation to buy, um, that's even going to be much better. Ramsdale is another player whose future is going to be decided next week. Ramsdale's price right now is 30 million. Nottingham Forest are the best club that want to sign him at the moment. You know, Forest are saying... 
they see him as a first choice, but they're not willing to pay anywhere close to 30 million Arsenal are asking for. And I've been talking about Gl uh, this with Glenn on the Glenn Kitely Everything Arsenal channel. You can go and check out our podcast. Uh, we've, we've, we've talked about Ramsdale, and I said anything that doesn't um, fit 30 million or reach 30 million, don't even try it. Don't even th think about it. We can send him out on loan for one year. He's going to do the savings well, very well. He's going to save a club from going down, and that's where uh, we are going to get our money. That's where Arsenal will get their money. So for me, a hundred percent, Ramsdale doesn't live for anything below thirty million. And if Forest wants him and they're serious, Forest have the money. Like Forest, how did they? How can they say they don't want to pay thirty million for Ramsdale, England's future number one? Yet they have spent a lot of money on rubbish players. Like they spent money. I I, I can't understand it. So Ram next week. We are going to know about his future and probably we'll get to know about the future of Arsenal's goalkeeping hierarchy as well.